Hi, Yagelsdorf here. For quite some time I've been trying to complete my collection of miniatures to take full advantage of the random encounters in the Mordheim games. And one of the miniatures needed um, for the random encounters is a swarm of rats, um, with the added bonus that I could use it for D&D. Um, I've been looking around the internet, uh, but I couldn't find any cool and affordable rat swarm models. So I decided to make my own. Um, so I found these really cool sculpts by Freebooter Miniatures and went to town. If you want to see how I made this awesome diorama slash miniature, keep watching. So for this project I bought some rat from Freebooter's Miniatures. They have a pirate themed skirmish game with some very nice miniatures and these rats are among them. I think they are rather meant to be put on bases as decorations, um, but they are really fun with some really fun sculpts doing some crazy things so I decided to make a little diorama slash rat swarm out of them. I started with some 3 by 3 cm bases that I had from my Oathmark dwarf set glued some recycled foam board uh, to it on one side and then glued all four bases to a piece of paper so that I can work on it easily as one whole piece. I tried to texture the budget foam board with aluminium and it kind of works, but I recycle my foam board from old takeout containers uh, and it is really springy and doesn't hold the shape too much. Anyway, for the whole diorama I wanted to have a piece of sidewalk with a little curb on it and a little entrance to the sewers from where the rats probably came. The curb I first tried to sculpt into the foam board, but after all I decided that I want some extra height, so I glued a smaller piece on top. For the sewer entrance I traced a small base that I had lying around and simply cut it out with a knife to have a nice recession where I will be able to put my manhole cover in later on in the project. Now for the manhole cover itself um, I will be cutting a round piece of cardstock with a scissor and then a few strips. Um, initially I wanted it to be more of a grate than a cover, that's why I did it the way you see it right now. Had I planned from the very beginning to, to make a real proper cover um, without any holes in it, I would probably make the cardboard strips much thinner. Anyway, remember to use a sharp blade anytime you cut some cardboard, otherwise it will slide around like hell. And I do this little crisscross pattern, first without cutting the final shape and because there will be some more layers to come. And one of these layers is going to be a nice rim to our cover, for that I'm again taking my base and then putting a cap of a paint bottle to make a smaller circle inside that I can cut out and glue to what we've made before. And this way we know very well where to cut and how much to cut. This is easily done with a scissor after it's all glued together either with a normal glue stick or PVA glue. As you see here I wasn't quite exact in my measurements so the manhole cover is a little bit too large and that's why I'm cutting it to size with a scissor. Next I want to give my sidewalk some texture so I took my awl and tried to sculpt some stones. As I said before for my foam board I'm using basically delivery food packaging. Well, not even basically, I'm using delivery food packaging, which is really, really springy and doesn't hold shape too much. So, after all, this was maybe the best idea to use it. And also, there was another problem that you will see soon, and namely uh, that <laughs> I took so much time to make this texture, and after all, I covered it all in different bits and bobs. Anyway, as you've seen, I first press in the shapes with a needle with an awl and then go over them once again with a not so sharp pencil. As I said before, I want to have my rats on four bases to be used as four different rat swarms or as one big rat swarm for uh, Mordheim. If you look up the random encounters, then you will see what I mean. So at this point I'm arranging the different rats onto my base 
and because of the way they are done they need to be recessed a little bit into the base so that's why I'm cutting in little slots and trying to press them into the foam board. Really this scalp would be much better done with a base made in some sort of putty like mealy put or something like that so that you can easily press them into and blend them with the base. And when arranging these reds they have so much character and they are so fun and I'm trying to do some storytelling with them. Make a little mini dioramas within my diorama like right here you see two red brothers back to back watching each other or over here you have some reds in shoes and one hiding under a hat and um, later on I'm going to add some bottles scattered around so that it looks like someone had a pretty wild night out. I've placed a few rats looking at each other really aggressively as if they're going to fight any second right now. And yeah, just have fun. These scouts are really fun, um, so arrange them in a way that shows it and shows all of these rats. So after our swarm of rats is arranged, let's start adding some little bits to make the whole base a little bit more interesting. Um, one of these guys is sitting on an axe, so I decided that we need some wood that has been chopped with it. Um, so I found some twigs, I found a scrap piece of balsa, and I'm simply scattering around here and there. I also try to put some pieces of wood between the bases, um, so that I will have to cut it through later on, um, to have some little indication of how the bases are supposed to work together. And as I said, Part of the story showed in this diorama is someone who had a tough night, left his clothes and shoes lying around and probably had a few drinks too many. Um, so that's what I'm trying to show here. We are going to sculpt a few empty bottles with milliput. For that I'm simply rolling a small cylinder and then trying to pinch the top off and roll it again to form a little bottle shape. They weren't perfect, but because I mixed so much of the milliput, I could make a lot of them and choose the best ones. And after they've cured, the only thing left to do is to find suitable places on the diorama. There were places where I didn't quite manage to blend the rats nicely with the base, so I'm using some PVA glue to blend them in with some sand. I'm also using it to give them some strength because for some reason the mix of cheap foam board and metal minis doesn't quite work that well when glued with super glue. So that's why I'm trying to reinforce it with this uh, composite material of PVA and sand. And just to be sure, I'm also covering the whole base uh, in another layer of PVA, water and black paint. I would use Mod Podge, um, but I currently don't have an access to it. Oh, maybe try to acquire some through internet, we'll see. So many people say that Mod Podge is the best shit ever that maybe it's worth trying. For the next step I'm going to need my trusty knife again. Um, because now we are going to separate the four bases from each other. So be sure to have a fresh and sharp blade to first cut the paper on the underside and then cut through the foam board and through the manhole cover. And this is something that I should have maybe mentioned before. Try to arrange your miniatures and all the decorations so that you don't have to cut through them at this point when you are separating them. And because of the cuts the edges are kind of rough and so I'm filling the holes in with speckle. So as you see at this point the build part of the diorama is ready and now comes the painting. And I have to say, I'm rather bad at painting and I'm really bad at filming how to paint. So bear with me. I first tried filming it uh, from this left side shot and it was quite nice. So I started with painting the manhole cover in a nice orange rusty color and all of the sidewalk in a deeper gray and the curb in a light gray. I also really like to paint wood in the Army Painter Desert Yellow color. I don't know, for some reason this paint gels with me really nice. 
and with a model this small, with models this small, you really have to get creative with how you paint. Then I went to painting the ground, the dirt that I made with sand and PVA, and I used a quite natural brown color for this to contrast well with the gray sidewalk. And right now I'm quite struggling to tell what color I'm painting and what I'm painting. <laughs> I think that I'm painting the tails and faces and legs in a pink color. I think it's center skin from Army Painter. And at this point I decided that uh, this angle is kind of weird and annoying and doesn't work, so I changed the angle. But it's also not that perfect and you can't really see what I'm painting because the whole thing is out of focus because I'm filming it with my phone's camera which is quite good but it's also really annoying to do it and I'm painting the rats different colors of grey to give them some variation but you can't see it because it's out of focus and it's so annoying because I didn't prime them and the paint doesn't stick and I didn't prime them because I used foam board and I didn't want it to melt and I wanted to have nice green bottles, but I don't have a nice green color, so I had to improvise with a dark and ugly green that I use for ugly orcs, and these are supposed to be pretty bottles. <sighs> what is going on? Okay, let's stop this right now. <laughs> let's do a little cut. Um, I changed angles again, and this angle seemed a little better, but I had to cut some footage out because it was really unwatchable. In the steps between now and then I covered the thing in a few different washes in dark tone and strong tone. I can't really remember which parts I covered in which wash um, but you will have to try it out if you want to make something like this on your own. Anyway, right now we are taking care of the dry brushing to make some highlights again. My usual technique is to dry brush with the base color once and then a second dry brush with a little bit of added white. I also highlighted the pink faces with pink again and I also made the teeth white. And as a final little touch I tried doing some layering on the bottles and I simply added more and more yellow to my dark green and at the very end I added a little bit of white and made a little streak um, to show kind of a light reflection. And the final, final step is to tidy up the edges with some black paint. So I've definitely learned a few things with this build. Um, I've learned not to trust uh, the packaging foam too much because it's really, really annoying and springy and doesn't hold the texture very well. I've learned to always prime metal minis or minis in general. And I've learned to not go overboard with uh, the stuff that you add to the base because, as I said in the video already, the whole cobblestone texture went totally away. You can't see it at all, basically. And of course, there's the aspect of uh, filming the whole thing. Um, I really had no idea how to film something this small, especially as I myself had trouble seeing <laughs> what I'm painting and trying to put it uh, to camera somehow it was even more difficult. I'm hoping to get some better gear in near future, so maybe this will help somehow. And I also like to plug another channel, another creator here on YouTube, Carl Makes Stuff. He also has an Instagram channel and fun fact, he posted a photo of how he paints his bottles, a little tutorial, basically five minutes before I was ready with recording the whole thing and um, after the diorama is already painted and varnished and everything, so yeah. <laughs> Have I waited a little longer, the bottles maybe would come out much better. <laughs> Although I don't have much faith in my painting skills anyway. So yeah, that's it. I still need a wraith and I still need a ogre and a few things. I think I've bought uh, something that could work as a Sister of Sigma for more time random encounters. Um, so I'm on my way to complete my collection of miniatures and uh, Rat Swarm is always nice to have for D&D. 
and uh, I also thought to use them as giant rats for Frostgrave, so it's a pretty versatile thing. And making the diorama itself was also really fun, you know, just to tell these little stories inside. And if you want to stay with, up to date with what I make, uh, if you want to get notified about upcoming videos, subscribe, press the bell icon and also check me out on Instagram, uh, where I post uh, little sneak peeks of upcoming videos. And check me out on Facebook, I'm active in quite a few groups. And I also have a Twitter, which is kind of there. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, i see you next time, bye!